Hi everybody. As promised, I'm going to show you a solution to number 7. And here's number 7. Uh, you have a curve y equals x cubed, uh, which is bounded by the lines y equals 0 and x equals 1. So that's um, sort of this like, triangular looking thing here. And we're rotating it around the line x equals 2. So I've tried to do my best picture of rotating that region around x equals 2. Okay, so um, there's two ways we could approach this. We could approach it with shells, kind of in the way that I've drawn, because this looks kind of like a bundt cake. Um, I can just cut each shell, starting with this innermost shell going out. Um, or if I wanted to, I could also think about doing slices by integrating across y. And you could actually use either technique. I feel like this problem is a little bit better suited to shells, but I'll show you both. So remember, the whole idea about shells is you're going to integrate through a whole sequence of these kind of nested cylinders. Um, so we need to write the equation for the volume of an kind of infinitely thin-walled cylinder. So the volume equation is 2 pi times the radius of the cylinder times the height of the cylinder. Well, okay, if these cylinders are coming from over here, um, the height of the cylinder is given by um, just whatever our f of x is, or in this case our y value, at a particular x-coordinate. So it's like, let's think about it this way. The x-coordinate that we choose is like where we're going to make that cylindrical cut. So let's pretend we're looking at this cylinder right here. So we've chosen a particular x-value. So once we've chosen our x-value, um, this is going to be x-cubed, this height. So that's going to be the height of our cylinder. Okay, but I can't just write 2 pi r, um, and then height is x cubed dx, because what's that r? What's the radius? In the problem we did in class, the radius was actually the x-coordinate that we chose because we were rotating around the y-axis. But here, if I look at the picture, obviously this distance is not the same as my radius because my radius is this distance, the distance from the axis of rotation over to the point we care about. So the question is, how do we find that thing? Well, I know the axis of rotation is at 2, so I know that full distance is 2. I know that this distance is x, therefore this remaining distance must just be 2 minus the x. So I'll write 2 minus x here. So that's what my integral is going to be. It's going to be 2 pi times the radius, which is 2 minus x, times the height, which is x cubed, dx. Okay, I'm not quite done yet because I need the bounds of integration. I need to know sort of where are my shells starting and where are they ending. So one thing we could do is start at 3 and end at 4. Because the idea is like the, remember the, the bounds of integration we're choosing here are like where are the x values that we're choosing for where we're going to cut the shells. So I could start with, so uh, when my x value is 3, that corresponds to, um, I guess we wouldn't want to quite do that, because if I plug in 3 here, that's 2 minus 3 gives us a negative 1. Um, so I, yeah, I don't think that's what we want to do. So I, I could start, let's say, at 0. Um, that's going to be the largest shell that I cut. And I could go over here to 1, which would be the smallest shell I'd cut. And let's just make sure that that makes sense. If I plug in 0 here, that gives me a radius of 2, which is right. We've got a distance of 2. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then the smallest shell, we plug in 1 for our x-coordinate. This term is supposed to be the radius, so 2 minus 1 is 1. And it looks like, yes, that is a distance of 1 for my axis of rotation. So I think this is the way that makes the most sense. I want to emphasize, though, that you don't have to slavishly follow some method that I told you or that a book told you. You can use your sort of native good sense. So the thing that makes this problem more difficult than previous problems is in the old problems, we were rotating around the y-axis, and in this problem, we're not. Well, what if we just turned this problem into one that looks more familiar? Um, so in particular, this problem would look like the old problems if I just shifted the whole thing left by 2, because then the axis of rotation would be on the y-axis. Well, you can just use a transformation. If I'm going to shift this equation left by 2, I'd have y equals x plus 2 cubed. Um, and so let me sort of re-sketch it here. 
So here's what it would look like. Now, um, just this part of the curve is uh, a portion of x plus 2 cubed. And then here I've reflected it around the y-axis. Um, you should be convinced that that's the exact same shape. I didn't change the volume when I shifted it over. Um, but maybe this is going to make it a little bit easier to think about. So um, in this case, my radius is going to be the distance from some x-coordinate over to the y-axis. Um, the reason I wrote negative x here um, is because when I'm thinking about the radius, I really want this to be um, like the magnitude. I want it to be just a distance. Like I don't want this to be a negative radius. Um, but if you think about plugging in like what x-coordinate is this, it's a negative x-coordinate. So that's why I've written negative x here. Okay, and then this is, so this is like my r. I've got my 2 pi r, so that's the circumference of each of those shells. And then I'm multiplying it by the height. And this function is just my shifted version of the old function. Um, and I'm starting my cylinders at negative 2, so that's like the largest cylinder. And then I'm ending with an x-coordinate at negative 1, which is like the smallest cylinder. So I'm starting my cylindrical cuts here, and I'm ending them there. Um, this particular integral um, is not algebraically equivalent to the first one. So if we look at them side by side. So like, for example, if I were to multiply this out, it would not be the same as if I multiplied that inside out. Um, but the bounds of integration are different, so we shouldn't expect that they would be the same. Um, what we should expect is that if you evaluated them, these two would give you the same answer because they're supposed to describe shapes with the same volume. Okay, let's do it one more way. Um, instead of shells, let's imagine that we're going to take slices, cross-sectional slices like this. Um, so this is pretty easy to imagine. So if I've got um, just a random slice out of the middle here, it looks like the overall shape is one of those washers, like this. Um, so if we're going to be integrating, I'm integrating from like y equals 0 up to the top here. This is at y equals 1. So I'm integrating from 0 to 1. And I need to integrate the area of that particular kind of donut shape as a function of y. And what it means to, to have this area be a function of y, uh, think about it this way. y is the input. y also is sort of the coordinate that tells you the height. So it's like when we give it an input, we're choosing a particular height to make the slice at. So I plug in a number, like 1 half, um, to my equation here. And it should tell me the answer for what is the area of the slice at a height of 1 half. OK, so what we got to do is figure out what is our area equation that describes these guys. So I know in general, the area of this is pi times the big radius squared minus pi times the small radius squared where this is the big radius and this is the small radius, because it's just the area of the big circle minus the area of the tiny circle. OK, so my, my real question is, where do these radii come from? So here, it looks like the small radius is always 1, because it's always from the axis of rotation to the edge here, and the edge is always distance 1. So I've got area equals pi big R squared minus just pi times 1 squared. OK, well, what is this? What is this larger radius? Um, this is a little bit trickier. So if I knew what this distance was right here, then I could figure out what that distance was kind of in a similar way to how we did it with the shells. Um, so because I know this full distance is always 2, if I call this distance x, then I know that that distance must be 2 minus x. Um, but the problem is, uh, I need to know what this x is as a function of the height, because I'm not choosing the x, and then that's telling me the shape. I'm choosing the y value, and that's telling me the shape. Um, that's what it means to integrate across y rather than across x. It's about which thing are you choosing as your input, and then which thing is related to that variable. So I've got this y as a function of x, Let's solve it for x as a function of y. So if I take the cube root of both sides, now I've got x equals cube root y. And this describes the same curve, only now if I plug in a y value, it will tell me the x. 
So this distance x, if I'm thinking about it as a function of y, is actually the cube root of whatever y value I've chosen. So if this is cube root, cube root y, and that is 2, then that means this distance must be 2 minus my cube root of y. Okay, so that's now told me the big radius. So I can write my area equation as pi times cube root of y squared minus pi. So now I can write the original integral as integral from 0 to 1 of pi times y to the 2 thirds, because that's the same thing as cube root x, oh, sorry, cube root y squared um, minus pi. Oh, sorry, I factored the pi out. So I moved the pi out here. So this is actually just minus 1 dy. Well, I don't know. Maybe that was easier than shells. Anyway, this problem uh, you can do either way. And, and many of these problems you could do either way. Okay, I hope that's helped.